Pound CAD specifically, uh, like your Pound New Zealand, like various other pounds, you've got these minor pullbacks at the moment. And like I said, I wouldn't be shocked if in the very near term, you do find that there is reaction to the upside. If you're going to trade it long now and you're more or less a scalp slash intraday trader, of course your size needs to deviate greatly. Um, but my overall bias still is short. The reason being is because you bounced off of this uh, key moving average here. Great long zone, great tech long zone. We looked long at that point. I labelled it, I mentioned it, I posted it. Um, and you had your reaction, it's pulled up to the upside. Now what is happening is you're slamming back into firstly this area where the market fell, but more importantly there is absolutely layers of price action to the left hand side here. So breaking that all in one go, um, I wouldn't say is enormously likely. I think, I think in the nearer term you may get something like 1694, but there is very, very close support on your pound CAD. So if you do end up having very tight margins, market moving sideways in this area that I'm labelling, I wouldn't be totally shocked either. Um, or if you just come up here, I wouldn't be shocked. So, you know, if you get something like this, I wouldn't be entirely surprised. I would just be very careful if you're trading it. If you are going to short it, I would do it above this previous high, okay, because you've got very early price rejection there. It's not a very weak pull down, therefore there isn't a lot of sell side uh, impetus. Um, and like I said, if you want to sort of get rid of the confusion of all of these candlewits, there's so much price action to refer to, it is easier just to put your time frames up. It cancels out a lot of things you don't particularly need to worry about. Um, and you can see, therefore, that if you're someone who wants a longer term short entry, in my opinion, um, and you're slightly confused about what's going on, you may be better off just waiting until if and when you beat the previous high, because that will bring you in line with historical key price action, short side entries, probably get your stock oscillator, RSI, whatever you use, come up like this. And you can see the various times that you've had significant price rejection and it has pulled you down in the market all the way along here, okay? That's really, really important. You can see that there, it's happened so many times, and I would say it's probable that is why you fell from here. Okay, but like I said, there isn't a lot that I can see visually on lower time frames pulling it straight back down. You would expect if that was the case, it would fall really quickly. It's not happening like that, and therefore I would plan further shorts up here. So you could have light shorts here maybe, but further 175 is more preferable for me. A lot of these videos I do and streams are based on you know swing entries because that's how most people trade. Lots of people have lives. Um, and uh, it gives you an overall gauge for the long-term market. That's why some people join my academy. It's just simply because they're investors. They want to trade on the longer term. So understanding the key um, aspects of any trading plan and long-term trading is, is very important to them. Um, if you don't have my free training, don't forget to get it underneath this video. So if you're looking to the long side, I would say anything back near your key MA your key 200 MA here is ideal. You've got your key price action there as well. You've seen rejection at this point previously. So anything into here um, is ideal. Again, it requires significant fall. If you do bounce um, on lower time frames before, then you could have a front runner about 1677, I would say, because you've got minor price action, minor support that may support you to the upside. You can see that within your amalgamation of key MAs. But it would require a forceful fall and whether you're going to get that with all these tight margins, like I said, and very, very close weekly support um, is debatable. OK, so if you haven't shorted it, I wouldn't do it at this point. It's too late. The price has already fallen. If you're someone who wants to buy it, it's going to have to go significantly lower again. OK, um, so that is really my bias. I would say. Probably for risk averse traders, you're looking short 175. Scalp entry slash intraday, slightly higher than we are 171. If you want to get long 169, but risk averse long is 168, and then further down 1645. So just spread things out, be careful because you've got a lot, a lot of movement on your pounds given the latest data. Similarly to um, other pound pairs where it's dropped, people are putting their money up, saving. Um, 
with a great British pound, and that's why you get this sudden fall, because people liquidate. Um, and it comes off the back of that really, really sharp up move as well. So, yeah, be careful with that. Pound CAD, I like the pound New Zealand. I think you may get a uh, knee-jerk reaction. And it does look, if you look on lower time frames, not particularly strong to the upside nor downside. Okay, so just be wary of these pound pairs right now. And I would say look for that longer term risk averse bias. So get my free training underneath. That is 